Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for the Cleaning and Cocktails podcast. This is where I get the opportunity to speak with fellow cleaning business owners, small, medium, and large. We take the time to let them share their stories on the ups and downs in the industry. I also speak with other experts and professionals in the industry, from your manufacturers, your suppliers, trainers, as well as other types of entrepreneurs. My mission is to empower our cleaning industry, to inspire and motivate each and every one of you. I want you guys to reach new heights of success and learn from one another. My goal is to have you walk away with some tips, secrets, advice, and opinions that are relevant to all of us in our day-to-day hustle and grind while we're out there in the field working every single day. So sit back and share a cocktail with us and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Cleaning and Cocktails. You know me, Ricky Reglato from Route Rosal Services and your host here with Cleaning and Cocktails. Uh, it's a show about entrepreneurs, cleaning industry, facility services industry, suppliers, to, uh, anybody who's in tech, manufacturing. Our, our goal with the show is to empower this industry, right? So what I wanted to do is share stories. And what I'm going to do today is share an awesome story with a good friend of mine that I've known since I got into the industry. Uh, we're, we're right here in my hometown of Chicago, uh, right outside of Chicago, to be exact, in, in Maywood. It's a company called Seaway Supply with Tom and Gorgon. He is the CEO, the founder, been in the business for a while, uh, a very good friend of mine. And I'm just super stoked to share a story because I, you know, I know it and I think the rest of you should know it. So Tom, cheers, my man. Cheers, Ricky. Thank Thanks you for coming for, on, man. Um, and to just start, why don't just get into who Tom is right. after you drink? A- after. All right. Well, welcome everyone. And Ricky, uh, well, we're drinking some Blue Label here, you guys. You guys can't see, but Tom took care of us today. So I, I'd like to say thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me on the show. And also thanks for being the first uh, to have a drink with me in this room. I've waited over 10 years to have a drink in this room. And uh, this is supposed to be the little clubhouse here. And it just hasn't been used correctly. So. Well, because you had to wait for the right time. <laughs> I had to wait for the, the right time. This is the right time. So uh, this is the right time. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're uh, interested in sharing my story with your audience and, and the group of people who uh, tune in and watch. I've watched some of the videos and I love them. You've had some great uh, businesses on already. Uh, some of the people I know and uh, they did a great job on the show and I'm flattered to be here. Awesome. Well, you know, it, one of the first questions Tom, I always touch in is, is you know, cleaning, supplies. I'm, I'm almost positive you didn't start directly in the supply industry Share us, you know, you don't have to say how, how long ago if you don't want to, but uh, I think it's very, you know, that's helpful for the industry, for everybody to know how long you've been in the space. But d- did it start with you starting in the supply industry or how did you get into the cleaning industry? So I got into the cleaning industry because I was really into distribution. And I worked at a couple different distributors as a salesperson and sales manager and I started to form ideas about what I thought was the best way to service customers, regardless of the product. Um, so I started looking for a business to be in. So uh, rather than build a better mousetrap, I thought I'd have a better level of service and be able to understand what people needed. And there was a supply company um, owned by a, a husband and wife team. And they basically um, were at the end of their line. They were great people. They had a great career. But it was just too much. The world was changing too much. And they were ready to shut down. And I bought what they had and started Seaway under my guidance um, about 26 years ago. So, wow. Yeah. And I had to learn what a vacuum was and a wet dry vac. Because like some of my customers, I didn't know either. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, I, you know, even before we started this episode right now, uh, we had the pleasure to walk through your space, right? And, and, and walk and talk, you know? And, and I think, you know, thank you for that actually too, is I think it's super important for everybody to, to see what goes on behind the scenes in a supply, you know, warehouse, in a supply office with a supplier, because there's so much more than just the supplies itself. Uh, I mean, it's logistics, right? Like yes. you've got, you got a logistical yes. operations back here. Yeah. So t- touch on when, when you first started too, like, was it here? Was it in this space or... Have you have you grown? Has has it progressed from a smaller space to where we're at today? 
Yeah, so we progressed from a very small space. When I bought, I started out out of my house. I, I thought I have to go into business, I have to make that leap. And I told my wife, I quit my job and I'm starting a company and here we go. And she said, where are you going to work? And I said, in the front part of the living room. So, <laughs> <laughs> Like I got a garage for the warehouse. Yeah, under the bed. We were downtown too. Oh. And we didn't have any storage. So, you know, when customers say, I have to have that product. Will you promise me you have it on the floor? I'm like, I don't have a warehouse. <laughs> They're like, put it under your bed. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, uh Started out very humbly, uh, ended up realizing that really was too humble and was able to buy that supply company that was a husband and wife team that uh, had some really great brands and that was very important to me. They had Spartan Chemical, they had Advanced Equipment, and in the cleaning industry, those were two marquee There's some big brands. names. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I see them back there now. So, I mean, you, you've been I, I, since day one. Since day one. Uh, I sat with the advance uh, representative and he said, I, I need you to sign your distributor agreement. And I said, sure. He says, well, right here's where you promised to buy over $200,000 a year from us. And I said, well, what was purchased last year? And he said, $1,500. And I'm like, Whoa. well, that's a big jump. <laughs> yeah. That's a big commitment. Oh my God. <laughs> so we worked through it together and we've been um, through their changes as well. They were bought by, uh, an international company, Nilfisk, uh, which is worldwide and billions and billions in sales, and they're number one in the world in cleaning equipment. Yep. Um, and they've changed with the times, and they, they've kept Advance as their uh, premier brand in the U.S., uh, and they've put a lot of support uh, into the brand, and they've always had great representatives. Uh, so we've been uh, fortunate to be an Advance distributor, and the uh, additional brands that they bought over the years. Um, and so we have the familiarity, we have the foundation, we have the technology. Uh, we touched a little bit during the tour on what it takes to keep things going. Yeah. And uh, when I started, we had a uh, microfiche and I didn't know how to use it. So when someone needed a part and you had to look on this film and it was incredible. I did not want any part of that. Uh, but now we've got software and type in part numbers and click on numbers on a schematic. And, you know, it's it's so fast. It's so easy. Uh, it makes our service level so high. So that's, yeah, I was going to jump on that later. But yeah. since you're touching on it, I mean, yeah. it's, you know, again, there's the, the personal relationship and the one-on-one -on -one feel that I know I get when I, when I come to Seaway or any of my team members come, you know, first name basis, uh, just... Just the, the confidence in knowing you're always looking out for us, right? And, yes. and you're looking out for, we, we are the client, but you're looking out for our clients too, yes. right? Now, but the technology piece, you've seen how, you know, everything's evolving now and you've got a big operation back there. So how do you keep things in stock? Like, how do you know, like, to, to keep things stockpiled back here? I mean, what, 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 what are indicators for you that, that helps you understand that? So we've done a few things, and a lot of it has to do with experience. And we watch other manufacturers, we watch other distributors. We're part of a group called the United Group. And we have, um, I have friends who have companies like mine around the country, and I talk to them about their processes and their software that they use to run their business. Um, so we kind of have a blend of things. Uh, we certainly rely on the computer. And it gives us a lot of great information. I mean, all our sales, all our purchases, everything run through the computer. Our usages are all right there. We can categorize. We can do a lot. Um, but it doesn't hurt that we're up from behind our desk into the warehouse a, a bunch of times a day. And we're very aware of when someone places a large order that might put us at a, a risk of running out two or three weeks later. Uh, because everything we buy is in big volume and it, it has lead times. And we have to manage that. We have to manage multiple items with lead times, with multiple customers. It's complex. So we do look. Yeah. And you know what? We Tom, don't that, just rely on the computer. Yeah. No, that's a, that's, that's a good point. I, you know, and, th and this made me think of something, too, is, you know, the audience is, is small business, right? Uh, but, again, medium, large. It, there's a, a variety of people that watch the show and are listening to the show. Um, but for the most part, it's small business. So what I, what I like to tell them, and whenever you know anybody calls me for any advice or opinion on supplies or supplies and equipment or 
you know, a supplier. I say you have to leverage your supplier because nine times out of 10, us as small business owners, we don't have the buying power. We don't have capacity right. to get a, the best price on an item because we're not buying all the time. You right. just said it where you guys buy in bulk. Right. Like another reason for me to say team up with your local supplier, team up with somebody because you're actually our buying power. Yes. Right? Like is that yeah. is that how we should look at it? You should look at it that way. And we are, are very conscious. I know you and I uh, are very concerned about what things cost. But we're also more concerned with how well our business goes. Yeah. So though we look at the cost, we also don't want to lose business because we were foolish about the price. Um, so cost is, is forefront in my mind too. So quite often we don't charge for delivery. Uh, it's not in every case, but the ideal situation is when people order from us and we put it on our truck and it's a bunch of items and we deliver it at no charge. And that's a real value to the customer because in the world of online ordering uh, and freight charges, and right now the whole freight um, environment is out of control. Yeah. FedEx said, hey, we don't want any more Amazon packages. And there's a backup in the ports from China and they can't get stuff out into the uh, marketplace. Uh, freight's a gigantic issue. Uh, rates have gone up tremendously, and we don't. And as a small, as in the small business world, you don't know that, right? You, like don't know you know, that. you know to an extent, but you only know what like the news tells you or what right. you look at online. Where, right. again, you guys are in the back, right? The back side of that. You yeah. you know how it, how much it costs for something to get shipped right. and landed in your doorstep, right? And we know when we order uh, a truckload of Spartan Chemical, we know it'll be here in forty eight hours. Almost as night follows day, uh, there's certain things that we know. And then there's other things we know where we might buy five pallets from the mop manufacturer. And it might take a full week just because it's a less than truckload order. And it goes from this town to this town to this town. And, you know, sometimes it misses the outbound truck. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's not as controlled. So something I want to ask is what, it's a very fragmented industry, right? As you know. Yes. Uh, what is a competitive advantage, which I could say one for sure for you, but what is a competitive advantage that you say Seaway Supply has with their, you know, let's talk about cleaning contractors right now, right today, or right now. Um, I know one for me is that you are flexible. Yes. You know, because you don't have a corporate structure or, you know, red right. tape or anything like that. Right. What, what else do you, do you think people should know about Seaway and Tom and how you guys operate in this space to give you, because uh, it's very competitive in, right. in, in the space, especially with online e-commerce. Yes. So I, I think the most important thing is for us is to value the customer. Um, that's our value proposition. We value you. You as a customer are really our guest. And we want to treat you well. We want to make sure you know, you, you're know you satisfied, you're pleased. We, we uh, exceeded your expectations. Um, you know, we're not crazy and we don't expect our customers to be crazy. We, we expect an, a fair, honest transaction. And, you know, we touched on it a second ago and I'm going to go back to that. Uh, so when we have a customer like yourself and you order 14 different things of some variety and then they all get delivered the next day, which most of our orders get delivered the next day. They come in, they go out. And if we... Uh, get an order early enough in the day and the truck's going that way, we put it on the truck. So you might get your order, you know, within two hours of placing it. And that's phenomenal. So I know Amazon's got a lot of next day, next day or second day, and you've got to join a membership to get that. You know, we're pretty much doing what people would hope could be done uh, without even really having that as a request. Yeah. We, we've set the standards for ourselves to do a good job uh, make sure the customer is like, wow, this is great. And whether it's the quick service, whether it's the value of the item, uh, meaning it's a long-lasting, durable uh, product for the amount of money that they're paying, uh, whether there's training and expertise that went along with it that make it invaluable, uh, like some commercial always would say priceless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we really want to be that. We want customers to say, you know what, that's good. Yeah, And so over the years, we've grown our business primarily because we don't really lose customers. Uh, they value us like we value them. Mm -hmm. And each year just builds more volume. We're not just churning customers and 
and burning bridges and yeah. looking for new relationships. We're nurturing the relationships we have. We're, we're waiting for everybody's success, ours, theirs, and we're working towards it. Yeah, and, no, and, and I can attest to that, right? Like I know when we talk all the time and, you know, we have our annual conversations of, you know, price points and where things got to be. Yes. I know in the beginning I used to always try to beat you up on price, right? And you should. It's the nature of the and game, you should. right? That's but right. I think a good topic for, you know, because, again, from the outside looking in, you know, not only do cleaning contractors have to deal with their customers on making decisions on price, you too, where we're, you know, we're trying, oh, I, I could buy it cheaper over here. And right. What, what do you, what else should somebody be thinking about when they're buying supplies other than just price? So really, uh, price is very important, but I, I guess it's how you arrive at price. Uh, when you just look at the price of an item, uh, just a transactional cost, um, this glass costs $2, and then you want to beat the price on the $2 glass. I mean, that makes sense, um, but you might have to... I, and I'll give you a quick example as yeah. I say that. I remember once I had to buy a fuse for a repair, and the, the service guy said the fuse was $22. The fuses don't cost $22. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying $22 for a fuse. And I'm stubborn. So I went off to try and find that fuse for not $22. So at the end of the day, I could not find that fuse for a lower price, could not find that fuse, could not buy the one fuse. You would have to buy a thousand fuses, and then the price difference really wasn't even worth it mm -hmm. from the $22. So at the end of the day, that $22 would have been the smart thing to do. And because I'm a little bit stubborn and I wanted to beat that price and I thought it shouldn't cost that, um, I didn't realize how specialized that fuse was. And on a lot of the things we sell, there, there's a little bit of a specialty to it or a little bit of a story to it, and maybe that price is built into it. When you have technology or a Microsoft license, you yeah. know, do you really have to spend $300 for that? I mean, they've already sold it. Or, yeah. <laughs> haven't they gotten their money yet? <laughs> um, no, yeah. yeah the, the technology's there. So the price is not only in that, it's also in future technology. It's in R&D. It's in the service level. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into the price. So it's not just $2 for a glass. It's the ongoing relationship. It's knowing we'll be there. It's knowing that you can count on us. When you need that thing on a Saturday, when you, you call and you ask, and, and it gets accomplished, and you say, I'm glad I'm a customer of this guy because yeah. other people might not take care of me. Yeah, and, I, and again, in the beginning... When you know I would see price and I'd be like, oh, okay, and I could find it myself somewhere else, right. just like your story. I feel like we forget to think to put a, a value to time, right? Because you spend a lot of time trying to find yes. the right deals. Yes. Where it's like, what about the time you could have you could have used that time doing something else? Yes. Where at least with you guys, like, hey, here's the price. Right. We know. It's right. it's click of a button. It's pick up the phone or yes. it's an email. Pick this up. We already know our costs. It, just, it feels better to know I save time right. to make this yes. decision. You know, like exactly. that, you forget about that because, yes. again, you're always trying to find deals. You yes. know, so, so I, go ahead. That, that is the value. That is you, you save time. You're not worried about where your delivery is. You're not wondering if you're going to get it. You're not wondering if you're going to get someone to talk to if you have an issue. We answer the phones. We call back the, uh, the people. We respond to emails. Um, we're not just some call center somewhere. We're, yeah. we're very tuned into your needs. What do you are uh, so for for the person that's just started their cleaning business? They're hitting the refresh button. What I mean, we talked about it earlier. The starter kits, right? Like, what are supplies or equipment that you would say you can't go cheap on, and you, you've got to have good quality equipment or supplies to do the best job for your client? Are there a few that stick out for you? You know, um, I've tried to sort that, funnel that um, common knowledge that people should have that I could impart upon them. And this is just such an interesting business where there's so many different scenarios, different types of flooring, different types of customers, different types of just so many different needs. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. So rather than say, well, you know, you need to have this kind of vacuum or, you know, a swing machine is the most versatile piece of cleaning equipment you could have. And there are things like that, where if you only had to buy one cleaner or you only had to buy one piece of machine, we could do that. We could say, 
buy this. Um, but it, it's just so not the case. Everybody has a special need. And I know um, when you're a, a company that wants to achieve success with your customers, you're looking to do special things. Yeah. You don't want to say we don't do windows. Well, not, yeah, that's what I was, that was going <laughs> to be my next, my next question is like, you know, you saw us when we came in. Like, yes. I mean, we started adding services. Do you, when you see contractors that come in and, you know, not that they're just sticking to janitorial cleaning, but, uh, you know, you've got carpet cleaners back there. You've got strip and wax, you right. know, strip and refinish machines. You've got the, right. the, the floor scrubbers. Do you... Do you think we we as cleaning contractors should always be thinking about adding services, even if we're not knowledgeable? Like, is that because nobody would think that I can go to my supplier for advice on that? How do you feel about saying, "Hey, I can actually add value here," and let you know that, you know, you should or shouldn't? What do you, What do you think about adding services as a cleaning contractor? So I think there's two things there. Um, one thing is I'm kind of big on focus, even though I'm all over the place. It's all over the place in a range. Do you think I got focus? I do. <laughs> I do, Ricky, and I know you, and I know you do. Um, so I think what happens, and, and this is the other part of that, right, is the customers know you, and they really want to do business with you because how well you've performed in the area that they asked you to perform in. They say, hey, how about this? And you say, well, that's really not my thing. Which and, happens all the time. Right. But yeah. And then they say, you know what? It will be your thing, and we'll, we'll help you get through it, and we'll be with you so you'll have that thing and this thing. Because we want to do business with someone who cares about us. That's a good point. And that's, yeah. yeah. Like it's, so that's they're buying you, into you. Yes, they're right? buying into you. So then it's almost they're allowing you to learn. Yes. The other service, right? Yes. And, and add that because they know, it. again, at the end of the day, it's a service. And you'll be outstanding. Yeah. And once you get the hang of it, because you're not going to give up till you get the hang of it, yeah. and you're going to make sure they're satisfied and, and the situation is set correctly, and that's why they wanted you to do it. Yeah. So, yes, I, I, I think on one hand, you know, you want to do what you do well, and then on the other hand, when opportunity presents itself where you've got a good customer, client, who says, I need you to come into this area for us, it's underserved, and you'd be the perfect person. And we've had that through the years where... Someone says, and this is what I, I'm thinking of doing, and yeah. you listen to him, and then you say, well, thanks for telling me about it. Yeah. And he's like, well, you're doing it with me. What? Uh, yeah, and it's 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 cool because like I remember so many times you would tell us about certain machines, about certain services, and it, you know, me and Marley would be like, oh, yeah. could we do that? Nah. Well, maybe not right now. We'll do. It. And then Tony would come and say, hey, Tom just told me about we're gonna yeah. do this, and I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, well, <laughs> hey, okay, sure. Right. But I, again, it's that point where you're, you're getting to know. Right. The, the contractors. So on that notion, do you, because you've seen many coming, come and go and walk in the doors. Do, is there a certain point or do you, do you think it is in the best interest of us as business owners or anybody that's in management for, for cleaning or maintenance service companies that they should dedicate an individual to supplies and equipment, either ordering, managing, or being that expert in-house? So that's a great question, and I think it's a, the most relevant question, right? Um, for me, people who are uh, my friends who are distributors around the country, you know, the always, the, 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 uh, the wise comment is, don't work in your business, work on your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I interpreted your question as, should you have somebody doing specifically that, as opposed to somebody who's part of all these other things? And I would say it evolves from uh, a certain size to another size, and the needs change. I watched um, one of the segments where there was a business owner, um, and many of your uh, segments have business owners who have grown and scaled their business. And it's always a similar story, right? Not that it's scripted, but, you know, they started, and then it started to get better, but they were still doing this, and then they had to get somebody to do that, and... You know, so I think when you find the right person to trust with certain components of your business, you're, you're okay to let that go. So when you see someone in your group that has really good insight, not just the lowest price purchase, but a continuity of supply, got the item during the shortage, you know, there's all these things to consider. When you see 
somebody doing a better job than you think you would have done, you're happy to say to that person, you know what, let's make this your primary responsibility. Yeah. And so I don't know if I answered So it's you. almost like it, it'll, it'll present itself. Yes, right? that, that's right. That's because I think, that and that's why I brought the question up too, is, you know, I, I know I talk to a lot of contractors that are like, man, I get overwhelmed and, you know, I, we, we forget to order supplies or we don't know how to order supplies efficiently. And I start to think like, man, that's, that's like a job in itself to stay on top of that, know your costs, know your expenses. Um, but you're right, actually, it, because for us, it evolved. It, it almost, the job created itself so because we got so, like, there was just too much going on. You bring up a good point. And, and, and the point is the technology and the reordering of supplies, and I forgot. Um, because it's one of the things I think is most common. And we talked about technology a little bit and how it's changed and where it's going. I have to tell you, one of the things I think that I'd like to develop and, you know, with your technology and, and software. So it's a, almost a reorder point. So many of our customers, pre-pandemic, you know, if it's We'll talk office, about this. We'll talk about this offline. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. As um, the reorder points. You know, if you're uh, an office building and you have 3,000 people a day that work in it and another 1,000 that come visit, you know, it's 4,000 people a day. It's the same number of towels and tissues. You know, sometimes the reorder point is here or there, depending on whether the guy remembered or not. But when you average it out, for the most part, you can start to see actual what the inventory should be yeah. and what the order quantity should be. And wouldn't it be nice if I sent them a text message that said, just confirming this is your order or email or whatever. So, so you're saying like from you as the supplier for the contractor. Yes, artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. Which is really, you know, I'm going to uh, tell you that when I first got into the business, a lot of people talked EDI, which is electronic data interchange. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what supplier and manufacturer, EDI is a big thing. Yeah, it's a big good, thing. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, what's so complicated? Hey, this is what I need. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So you'd like to be able to think it's really not that complex where you have to have two uh, engineers write a whole bunch of software to, to meet. So we just recently did an API for our business software with our catalog where uh, we take a step out of the process. But, you know, I, I'm not so sure we really took the step out. We did. I shouldn't say it that way. But we're still watching. We're yeah. still concerned. So the actual order entry part's out, but the step's still in a way. Still in a way there. Yes. So one of the things that we'd like to do is help the customer make sure they're never out of product, we'd like to remind them, you've ordered this from us all the time, like this, now it says your time. And believe it or not, I wake up and say, I haven't heard from so-and-so in a while, and then we'll see the order from them. And it, it's almost like, you know, you wake up at six o'clock every day, you know so-and-so's gonna order every third week, or you know so-and-so's gonna order every second it's, it's week. It's good predictive. But, yeah, yeah right? So, so there's something there. So we need some AI software where we can go out and tell our customers, these are the things you buy, this is your history, and this is our expectation for you. Should we go ahead and bring it? Yeah. I mean, As, now you're almost doing the job for them. Yes. So that yes. person doesn't have to remember. Yes. It's already done. Okay, so yes. that's a good point. It is. We will be talking about it. I don't know that. if I communicated it well, but I think it's, no, a, no, it's yeah. a million I mean, it, dollar idea. Well, I know you guys have, <laughs> your, you, know, you, you guys have the catalog, whereas us contractors can purchase from... But I like the part where, because again, it skips the part of human error sometimes where yes. we we get busy in the business right. where some of these things could be automated. Right. Right? Yes. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right. We're going to talk about that. So, Tom, what about uh, to step away from technology and go back to your clients and your relationships, right? Is what 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 is a characteristic that you would say, because you see so many, I mean, I, I, just throwing a number out there, how many contractors do you do you have as clients? Probably a few hundred, you know, uh, in Chicagoland. Uh, and they vary in size. You know, some are large, uh, some are medium-sized, mm -hmm. and, and some are small, just working out of their houses or their trucks. Uh, what, what's, what's a characteristic of those, though, that you would say, like, it? you know when somebody's going to grow? Like, like, is there, because I'm always trying to talk to everybody who gets in the space and I get, because it's not all rainbows, right? It's not right. all, it's not easy. Like right. 
owning a cleaning company, there is many facets of that business for you to have to reach. Like we talk about all the time, 90% of the industry is working at a million or under in revenue. Yes. And people want to break that threshold. Right. What would you say, since you're around so many, sticks out to you when you see some of these contractors coming in to buy? So I would say the the characteristic of the contractor that's going to grow his business is the contractor that's interested in learning what the equipment does and how it will be productive for him. So they ask good questions. Uh, they understand that they have to not only have the equipment, but they have to know how to use it. And they have to look for different channel applications for it. It's not, you know, uh, one type of customer or one place only. Uh, they have to know how to be in business with that piece of equipment. Because uh, typically the piece of equipment is paid for quite quickly. Um, but what they need to do to be really profitable is continue using that piece of equipment and find accounts that they have that could use that service or find new accounts that um, they could use that service to get into. Yeah. So typically it's the uh, enthusiasm and the initiative to take what they have and make something out of it. Yeah, you know what, man, that, that makes me think of, like, it's, we, we, we try to th think like it's such a complex situation or a complex approach, but if you get the right supply and the right piece of equipment and you have the right trainer or person showing you how to use this, you what, what's our number one goal? Increase productivity, Yes. right? Reduce time being spent at an account. So then at the end of the day, you make more money, right? right. Like that, that floor, floor services. Like if you are manually mopping the floor and your mop bucket with a mop stick and a mop head, you refill, you have to go, you know, 800 feet across the building to refill. If you're doing that, there's nothing wrong with it, but if you wanted to get the, if you wanted to maximize the most out of that technician and increase your profitability, that's when you're talking about equipment, right. the yeah. flat mop system, the scrubbers. Like, right. but again, it it's it needs to match the the low. Like, if it's a two thousand square foot facility, you don't need a twenty inch floor scrubber, right? right? But those are things we should be asking you guys, right? right? Like, I mean, or right. doing research ourselves, but. Yes that's the business you're in. You yes. guys are going to point us in that direction, right? Yes. All right. Because uh, I could talk for three more hours here, right? But I like to keep this around 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. But I, I do think I'd love the audience to, to just get some more nuggets from you, Tom. Sure. You've been in this space for so long. Uh, you know and you've been through 2008, COVID that just happened, the pandemic. Uh, what do you what do you see coming in the next five to ten years in the cleaning industry that you would say, hey, if you're in this business, if you just started or you're hitting the refresh or you're second generation coming in, taking over, you know, your father, your mother, the legacy, what should we be looking out for from a supplies and equipment standpoint? So I think um, the way the industry has evolved, the way the, the world has evolved, the way the country has evolved, it's, it's moving forward. People are needing to learn things. There, there's new technologies. Um, there's new procedures. There's new habits. There, there's so many things that are forever changing. You know, you don't want to jump for every fad. Uh, TikTok's a big thing. I really don't get it yet. Um, doesn't mean I, I don't get Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, any of these other social media type um, platforms. Uh, we've got a lot of online selling, you know, um, there's Amazon, there's Alibaba, maybe it's going to be Google at some time, there's eBay, there's Bitcoin. Uh, there's so there's much. A lot. There's, there's a, a lot. So it's, you really can't try to do everything, right? You can't. But, but for the cleaning space itself and the field services space, right? I mean, that's a whole other topic of conversation, right? right? But what should we be looking out for? As, as, as contractors. So as contractors, I think the most important thing you want to do is you want to train your people. You want to take care of your people. You want to make sure they're safe, they're healthy. You want to make sure they take care of your clients in the same manner that they're safe and healthy. You know, we touched on, um, uh, well, in, in a different conversation, we've touched on safety in the environment and the earth. And um, 
uh, some time ago, you know, uh, green cleaning was going to be a thing. And it takes a long time for things to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought when I was a little kid, I thought I'd be like in the Jetsons. I thought I was going to have a little spaceship and go off yeah, to by work. Now. Yeah, by now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Everything seemed to be changing at a pretty rapid pace. And things do change and things are definitely different. But certain things are the same. People are still taking a toilet swab and moving it around the toilet. And, yeah. and every now and then there's something new or something different. Um but there, there's some very basics, and even like in sports, to make the, uh, you know, X's and O's to football or, or block and tackle. I mean, there's certain basics. That there's a lot of fundamentals or foundation yeah. that will never change. Will never change. And, I, and Tom, I'm always telling people too is, robotics, art. They're coming to the space, but you got to think of it as. And I, I forgot where I heard it from, but uh, it, those those type of pieces of technology are there to help. Right? Like right. You're never going to replace the human touch in our space, in the industry. Right. You need, there is always going to be a human behind the services right. that are being performed. But these robots and the robotics that are coming out, they're there to, to, to co-work. Right. right? Like let them do the 300,000 square feet of floor that you right. shouldn't try to do yourself manually. Yes. You focus on the details. Yes. Right? So years ago. So it's processing. It's processing. And years ago, I wanted to get into the robotics, be, you know, the first guy. I'm an ambitious businessman. I, w I want to be the guy who, who brings the new idea to market and, and has success. And, you know, they weren't able to do this or they only did that. Or there were real shortcomings. And just to date myself, the first time I went to buy a computer because I wanted to be like with it, I said to the guy in Radio Shack, which is, you know, going to date this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't even know. Is there any more Radio Shack? I said, what does this do? <laughs> and he says, what, is, what do you mean? I says, well, like, what can it do? And he says, whatever you want it to do. I said, well, have it tell me all 50 states. And he says, well, you have to put in all 50 states. So why would I want to put in all 50 states to have it tell me all 50 states? Because that's how it works. You put the information in, then you could look at it. Yeah. The home. That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now software and you know initially it was on like these CDs or DVDs and the floppy now, disk. Yeah, and so now everything's just evolved now. And my new desktop has got a processor that's super strong and it's the size of a big textbook. Uh, so everything's just phenomenal in terms of advancement in some regard. Uh, and now you can just say, hey, Google, what's this? And if I said, okay, Google, my phone would respond. Yeah. Um, so it's come. It, it's, it's yeah, come. It's, yeah, it's really there where you can pull up a YouTube video. How do you do this? See, Google's talking to me. You yeah. can hear that. Um, so there's a lot of good things. So what we want to do is we want to incorporate the technology that's new and easy, um, like the robotics now, to remember what we were talking about, advance, now as a machine out where they brought it in here they programmed it we went around our showroom we did the floor you can put a qr code up on the wall which shows the computer this is the program for this room it, it's become user friendly it's yeah it's crazy so like it's here's like, a road map of, yes. or here's the map of the location yeah I, I, I mean i love it and i appreciate it so I now do. it's not too hard yeah now when you go out and you say to your account hey you know what I know what we can do. We can take a computer and we can clean these hallways and we can do these things. Yeah. And then we can take that guy who used to run the auto scrubber and we can put him in these applications and you're going to have a cleaner building more exactly. consistently. Exactly. That's, it, it, it allows you to focus on more. I mean, yes. it, that, that is what we should, we should um, embrace it. Yes. Right? Embrace yep. it. Yeah. So, Tom, to end yes. this awesome conversation, yeah. right? Again, yes. just... Excited to, to be able to share your story and share just everything about Seaway Supply because it's, you know, I, I started in the industry, you guys, like literally year one, I met Tom and I, and I found this place and I would, me and Marley would come here, what, like almost like once a week at the beginning, right? And it's, uh, what, what is the vision for, the, for five years, 10 years, 15 years for Tom and Seaway? So, Ricky, it seems like just yesterday we said, hey, look, Ricky and Marley are here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we were always, everybody, you know, pleased to work with you and finding out what you wanted and, and figure it out. And we enjoy that on a day-to-day -day basis. 
you know, I know work is work, um, but we enjoy it. We have a nice time here. We have a nice team. Uh, many of the team has been here quite a while. Uh, we work well together. Um, but we work hard. I mean, that's part of it, right? Everybody mm -hmm. carries their weight and then some. And um, we enjoy each other. We help each other out. So it's really not too much like work. Yeah. Even though it's work and, you know, we've got to do the work things like collect money or have a hard discussion about, you know, expectations and then uh, meeting and fulfilling expectations. Mm -hmm. So occasionally, you know, those conversations are, are more difficult to have than just, hey, I need 10 of these. Okay, great, thanks, here. That transactional stuff is very pleasant, very easy, very yeah. fun. And in a way, that's a reward for some of the hard work we put in where we're teaching and we're training and the people leave and they haven't purchased anything, right? And you, mm -hmm. you spent the team in a day and you've done all these things and then... Well, what did we do today? Yeah. <laughs> what did we sell today? That's what my grandmother used to say to me, Ricky, when I first started in sales. What did you sell this week? Yeah. You're only as good as your <laughs> the, your last day. That's it. doesn't matter yes. what you did last year. Yes. Cool. Well, Tom, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and, and again, you know, share share some wisdom. You know, this, this industry, need, you know, it, it thrives on people like you. It thrives on the wisdom that you have and the experience that you have, you guys know, you know, cleaning the cocktails. What do we do? We empower the space. This is how I do it is by sharing people's stories like Tom and the company Seaway Supplies. You'll have more information on them down below in the description. You'll have the website. Tom will share your LinkedIn. We'll share all their contact information, especially if you guys are in Chicago, near Chicago, in the Midwest, even nationally. Please reach out. Check these guys out. Uh, they're, they're just a great, great company to, to work with and deal with. Uh, and please, don't forget to subscribe. Drop some comments. And thank you again, Tom, so much. Cheers. Look at that. Cheers. Last drop of my blue <laughs> label because, hey, this, this guy took care of us today, guys. Until next time. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks, everybody.